Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of EIH Limited and SKP Securities, it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to EIH Limited's Q1 FY22 earnings webinar. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the mute mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the management's opening remarks and presentation. Please note, this webinar is being recorded for compliance reasons. We have with us Mr. Vikram Oberoi, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Kalal Kundu, Chief Financial Officer. We will have the opening remarks from Mr. Oberoi, followed by a Q&A session. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Oberoi. Uh, thank you very much, Naveen, uh, and thank you to all the participants. Uh, I see the numbers going up to 59, so uh, a warm welcome to everyone. Uh, I hope everybody's in good health. Uh, we're glad to see things get a lot better with case numbers significantly declining across the country uh, uh, with COVID uh, after a very challenging second wave that touched, I think, all of us in some way or the other. Um, with the decline in numbers, and we, we've seen starting in actually in June uh, and then leading on to currently, uh, to the current situation, uh, business pick up substantially, and we'll share some information in the presentation that Kalol will be giving. Uh, the strongest drivers come from Oberoi Leisure Hotels, and Ober Oberoi Leisure Hotels continue to perform well. In June, we were nearly at uh, similar levels to what we were uh, in uh, 2019, before the pandemic started. And I'm sure in the months to come, uh, uh, many of our hotels will outperform the, the numbers of 2019, at least one hopes that to be the case. Uh, so Oberoi hotels have done uh, the, the best. We'll share some data on that relative to industry, um, followed by Trident Leisure. As far as business goes, uh, city hotels go, we're starting to just see some green shoots. Uh, and we also talk to our key corporate accounts. Uh, many are thinking about going back to the office. Some still haven't made a decision, uh, but I hope over the next uh, months, people will start re returning to the office. Uh, people will start traveling again on work and we will see occupancies in our city hotels also start to pick up even beyond what they've picked up today. Uh, so that's in, in, in quick summary, um, our, our comments. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and we look forward to presenting to you and also then answering your questions. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, warm welcome to all of you on these, uh, the first quarter earnings call from EIH Limited. Uh, I trust all of you are well and uh, keeping in good health. Uh, we have shared the presentation with the stock exchanges uh, an hour back. Uh, but for the benefit of all of you, we are going to present it here again. And please uh, feel free to ask us whatever questions you have after the presentation is done. Thank you so much. So we begin with an industry outlook. This uh, report was published by HBS Anarok uh, a couple of days back, which shows that relative to the last year, in each month, how has the industry performed? So the average daily rate has in the month of, uh, I'm sorry, in the month of March, 2021 versus 2020 was down by about 22 to 24%. And that, that is because in March, 2020, last year, the pandemic had still not kicked in. Uh, this, this, uh, this percentage is uh, only about four to 6% in April, 2021. And in May, 2021 versus May, 2020, the ADR is down only by two to four percent, with green shoots as as Mr. Kumugra mentioned, uh, uh, beginning to really emerge in June 2021, where the ADR is higher by 17 to 19 percent vis-a-vis the last year, same month. Uh, the occupancy and the rev par figures are here, and uh, just as a comparison, uh, we've mentioned this uh, time and time again before that our company's philosophy is to be the best, uh, if not necessarily the biggest. And therefore, our, our re we really want to provide value to customers um, 
and therefore our rates are, uh, if you see the numbers below, they are trading higher than uh, the industry on an average. So uh, our ref power growth, as you can see for uh, properties in EIH Limited, uh, as well as if you take all the domestic properties uh, uh, that are managed by EIH Limited are uh, in above of, uh, in excess of uh, double digit to triple digit numbers, which is of course a good sign for all of us. Uh, the HVS Anarok reports uh, report also highlights that domestic air traffic has increased by over 47% in June 2021 compared to May, as tra travel restrictions started easing across the states uh, because of declining COVID cases. Uh, hotel occupancy in all the major cities witnessed a month-on-month -month increase with a revival in leisure travel. That's our observation as well. Uh, Mumbai observed the highest occupancy in June 2021 as per the HVS Anarok uh, report followed by New Delhi, primarily driven by staycation and weekend businesses. Uh, hotel stocks are seeing an upward trend uh, due to increasing positivity towards the sector. And uh, as per the Anarok report again, brand opening, openings and sightings by properties have increased marginally in uh, the first half of 2021 compared to last year. Our outlook continues to remain uh, what we've maintained throughout the year of the pandemic. Um, basically our mantra, to endure, to revitalize, and then to ensure that we flourish when the times are better again. How do we endure? We endure through our robust balance sheet, and we are, of course, very enthused by a sharp post-COVID uh, recovery. Um, just to highlight our net worth, if you see over the last five years, it's remained at high levels. Uh, we have a strong asset base, and we continue with a strong asset base and our debt con uh, continues to be uh, in control, very optimally leveraged. So basically what this has helped us is to control our finance costs. And this also helps us to maintain uh, and obtain lowest interest rates from banks. And uh, as we have shared in the presentation, as of 30th June, our weighted average cost of debt was 7.51%, which is a reduction by about 61 basis points uh, in the last one year. This graph may be of interest to our investors and analysts. This basically shows uh, how the various categories of businesses that we operate in, uh, how they have performed. The first uh, leg of the graph is basically the first wave, which happened last year, and it shows how the journey has panned out. So the light blue color line is the overall leisure uh, property, as you can see in the, uh, in the legend. Uh, which has really picked up the most. And as you can see, the recovery after the second wave is even steeper. The, the gradient is steeper than the recovery that happened after the first wave. Now, again, uh, I, would, I would definitely like to repeat that these are all green shoots at the moment. And obviously we, we won't know uh, how things pan out, but this is exactly how it stands. And if you, if you really carefully note, you would see that leisure, both for Obra hotels, I mean, Obra branded hotels and Trident branded hotels, are uh, follow a, say, a same or a similar trajectory. Uh, at the same time, the metro properties are also beginning to show uh, some green shoots, and uh, we just hope it will get better on from here onwards. This is a trajectory of the occupancy and the ARR versus uh, we've taken 2019 as a normal year, uh, although the last month of 2019-20, which was March 2020, uh, really was a washed out month. But uh, generally speaking, if you were to compare 2019 with what is happening now, uh, I think occupancies, as you can see the graph, it came down after the first uh, wave, uh, after the second wave kicked in, and then it has start, started increasing again. And really it's difficult for us to speak on a call about uh, July figures, but as you can see, uh, June was also uh, on an upward trend. Uh, the, the better part of our story, I think, is in the ARR, where, uh, we are almost inching in towards uh, normalcy on an overall basis as we speak. So in June, as you can see, our ARR was 8,728 against uh, the same month ARR uh, in 2019 of 9,300, which is a difference of about only five to 600 rupees. And these trends are in fact uh, better as we, as we move along in the months. Um, if I could just add to what Kalol is saying, based on, you know, the calls we get at OCC, our website visits, um, and uh, um, how we're performing uh, in terms of occupancy and ARR, we continue to be cautiously but, but 
optimistic that these uh, lines will continue to move positively going forward. Thank you. So the ARR and occupancy trends, uh, again, uh, the same story as you see, uh, leisure is the story here. Overall leisure, in fact, uh, the overall branded uh, leisure properties have outperformed in, in terms of ARR uh, versus 2019. Trident leisure is the same. Uh, the ARR is up by about 1,000 rupees more than 2019. The overall metro properties and uh, all of the metro properties actually are slightly lower uh, as of now. But again, the movement is in the right direction. So here you see there's a comparison with the, the market penetration index uh, with the ge revenue generating index. Uh, uh, EIH continues to trend higher and Obra Group of uh, Hotels continues to trend higher. And that is going to be our objective to remain uh, market leaders on, on uh, uh, providing the best, best value and uh, the best services to our guests, uh, albeit at a premium. We move on to the next segment, which is basically to revitalize and a number of steps have been taken uh, in respect of we've used this period of the pandemic to, to strengthen ourselves in terms of health and safety, in terms of uh, increasing our process efficiencies, uh, automation, technology, rationalization of fixed costs, and uh, a lot of effort is going in, has already gone in, and it continues to go in towards environmental consciousness. So, so, so we, we are moving towards a, a extremely environmental conscious company and some of the measures that uh, we've been able to take over the last uh, one year has been highlighted here. Uh, to begin with, uh, in, in, in terms of safety and hygiene, uh, we are proud and happy to, to share with everybody that we've been awarded a platinum rating for all hotels by uh, the International Agency Bureau Veritas. We've also been awarded as the best uh, safety and hygiene protocols by, and this is an editor's choice award uh, from uh, Travel and Leisure. Would you want to add anything? No, no, that's fine. It's, uh, maybe I'll just add one, one thing. Um, you know, the, the safety of our guests and our colleagues is paramount uh, as far as our organization is concerned. And we ensured that everybody who was eligible for vaccinations were, in fact, we completed this task uh, before the end of June. Um, we'd set ourselves a deadline of end of June. We actually completed it prior to that so that every single employee, uh, or whether it's employee or even third party contract, who's at an Oberoi hotel uh, or a Trident hotel has been vaccinated. Uh, and we continue to monitor that so that when people are eligible for their second vaccine, that happens too. We do have some people who had COVID uh, who haven't been vaccinated. Uh, and as soon as three months passes from the time of that, their vaccine, uh, they will be vaccinated as well. But anybody who comes to an Oberoi or Trident Hotel, all our colleagues who report to work have been uh, vaccinated uh, and in some cases will be vaccinated as soon as they're eligible, the three month period be, being, being that. We play a great emphasis on, on safety and hygiene for the safety of all our guests and all our colleagues. Um, and we follow safety and hygiene protocols without compromise. Thank you, Riku. So this is essentially one of the legs on which our revitalizing strategy uh, rests because we believe that as uh, leaders in the, the world of hospitality, uh, it is safety and hygiene which is of paramount importance to us and therefore uh, it's important for us to consolidate at this point of time. Uh, likewise, we've uh, used the last one year to, to increase efficiencies in our processes. And I won't read out all of this, but the kind of, uh, you, you all heard about the Uber Center of Excellence that was established uh, about one and a half years back. And uh, it's, uh, it's really helped us achieve a lot of milestones yes. in respect of procurement, where uh, it's really mm -hmm. helping us for uh, standardizing our products that we purchase, price rationalization, economies of scale, consolidation, transparency, technology and digitization, e-auctions, vendor portal, and an optimized procurement to pay cycle. Likewise, our budgetary controls have improved a lot. Uh, after we've implemented the centralized systems operating from the center of excellence, we actually today have a cockpit uh, view of, of the entire company up to the last level of detail uh, sitting in co corporate offices or anywhere from, uh, for that matter. 
and that really helps us to to maintain a lot of uh, sanity check on on what is happening around uh, tax compliances have improved a lot and i'm happy to share with everybody that uh, 13 of our units which has been managed by the ubra center of excellence have received a certification of uh, appreciation from the ministry of finance for prompt filing of returns and payment of gst during the financial year 31st march 2021 uh, likewise, there's been a lot of improvement in accounts receivables, uh, which is really, if you look at our at our uh, balance sheet numbers, you'll see accounts receivables have improved a lot. Uh, accounts payables at the same time has also improved in terms of our uh, our timely payments to our vendors, uh, ensuring transparency through using of uh, vendor portals. Our financial closing, you would have observed, has taken uh, lesser time. This time we closed the accounts three weeks ahead of what we normally do in, in uh, did in previous years. And that's all been possible because of the automation that has been done and the, the processes uh, that, that have been really tied up all towards one common objective. Uh, I won't really uh, belabor on this point on other processes and it's all available on the screen, uh, plus on the presentation that has been uh, provided to the stock exchange. So in case of any questions, any specific questions on any of these uh, initiatives, we are happy to really um, elaborate on and maybe in times to come in in the in the quarters to come we will see more of this uh, quantifying into positive results uh, in terms of efficiencies and cost uh, rationalization and as and when we are able to quantify them we will definitely come out and share with you those numbers as well uh, the financial agility uh, is demonstrated by way, way of uh, a much more stricter payroll uh, where we've been able to rationalize uh, human capital uh, in terms of a 24% reduction. And this reduction is mostly driven by, uh, again, as I said, process efficiencies in terms of multi-skilling. And that has helped us ensure that wherever there's a vacancy or where people have resigned, we've not had to fill up those vacancies and we've been able to manage with our current uh, workforce. Uh, likewise, this is very, uh, visible almost in all the areas. And uh, this cockpit view that I spoke about that really helps us. Uh, in, in, in maintaining a, a very tight control over our operations. I think the benefits uh, that I talked about really comes from people, guests and company, from people by rotation of job profile, uh, progression to senior positions within the company or outside, and increased uh, employee satisfaction. Uh, from guests by way of exceptional guest service, encouraged by a culture of multifunctionality, uh, in terms of company people efficiencies, talent development with new knowledge and skills. In terms of automation, uh, there's a great deal of work that has gone in again. Uh, we, uh, we work on a totally document uh, automated document management system or digital. So we practically, we are paperless, whether in the front of the house or in the heart of the house. Uh, all our processes are workflow based. So therefore generally uh, any approvals, et cetera, is all on devices, whether it's our mobile devices or on our iPads or laptops. There's a process of seamless consolidation, which again helps us in, in, in proper and timely closure of accounts. Uh, robotics is an area where we have invested and we continue to invest, where repetitive tasks, which are done by software technology, uh, saves valuable uh, human capital time and thereby reduces chance of errors and frauds. Our banking is today 100% online, uh, there's not a single check that is issued uh, on paper. Uh, and there's a lot of information integration uh, amongst all our software. I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, people who are aware of uh, the leading software that is in use in the hospitality industry, the Opera, Micros, SAP, Salesforce, et cetera. These are all integrated. Uh, and that is really a benefit uh, for, for all of us. Talking of environment, this is another area which is of great passion uh, for our company. We are happy to announce that uh, four of our hotels, which are managed by us, out of which two are owned by EIH, we have now installed uh, solar plants and uh, a couple of pictures are provided here. Uh, so this capacity is, it gives us a combined capacity of roughly three megawatt. And we are expecting to generate about 4.2 million units per annum, which uh, reduces the carbon footprint by about 30 to 40% in these hotels. Uh, the annual estimated cost reduction, uh, there will be an annual estimated cost reduction of about 80, 86% cumulatively taken. And again, I'm happy to share with everybody, our, our focus towards renewable energy has ensured that many of our units today, uh, hotels and units, uh, at least 10 of them have been listed out here, 
which are on renewable energy. So the Oberoi and Trident Gurga are, are on 100% solar energy. The Oberoi Vanivlas is the location where the, these pictures have been provided for, where we have solar plants catering to about 40% of our total energy requirements. The Oberoi Udayvilas, Trident Agra, Trident Udaipur, all of this uh, has got solar plants installed on premise. Uh, at the Oberoi Bangalore, Trident Bandrakulla, at the Oberoi Bangalore, Trident Chennai, no, this OFS Chennai, our power is basically wind power. And at Trident Bandrakulla, 50% of our power is, is from wind power. Uh, we continue with this mission, and as we move forward uh, in the years to come, uh, the, the objective and the endeavor to really uh, reduce our carbon footprint uh, and uh, make our business more responsible uh, as in when we go ahead. Uh, as part of our uh, initiatives, this is another uh, memorandum of understanding that we have signed with the government PSU, Energy Efficiency Services Limited. Uh, this is one of its kind in this industry. This is the first one that has been signed, which is going to help us uh, implement a lot of energy savings, uh, saving measures at very reasonable costs, given the, the, the muscle of the, of the company, uh, ESL, uh, in negotiating the best prices from uh, original equipment manufacturers. So not only is it going to help us conserve energy, but it is also going to reduce costs for us. The third dimension of environment is air. And as you can see, this is a screenshot from the Oberoi New Delhi taken uh, on 30th of July, which is today, where uh, the hotel air quality in, in terms of uh, PM 2.5 is at point, is at, is at four compared to 20 in London and 106 in New York. Uh, so this is something that really uh, speaks volumes about the clean air that we uh, really are striving to achieve across our hotels. Uh, in terms of water hygiene, uh, we have installed environment-friendly disinfection systems. All hotels have a centralized ultraviolet water disinfection system. These microprocessor-based systems are operational around the clock to ensure water hygiene. And the UV systems are environment-friendly as they have offset our consumption and dependence on oxidizing disinfection chemicals like chlorine. We have our efforts going in towards wastewater management as well. All, all hotels have sewage and water, uh, wastewater treatment plants that enables us to treat used water to high grade recyclable quality treated water, and which is used for irrigation of our lawns, of our gardens, air conditioning, cooling towers, and flushing systems. The recycling of used water not only reduces our usage of fresh water, but also helps in conserving groundwater resources and municipal water resources where, in, uh, where we use. So we believe that all of this measures, and this is the last one, uh, heat, heat pumps, uh, which replaces fossil fuel-based water heating boilers, uh, which we are installing at our several hotels. Uh, all of these measures are basically to ensure that uh, we use this period of the pandemic to really work on these measures and make sure that we flourish as we, as we go ahead. And like Mr. Vikram O'Brien uh, mentioned, uh, a focus is on vaccination of our employees. So we believe that uh, when the COVID really, uh, the pandemic comes to an end and uh, normal times return again, we will be in a position to flourish uh, with our leadership in domestic leisure, uh, food and beverage, our alliances and guest recognition. Uh, I won't dwell much on this slide because this is, uh, this is a repetition uh, essentially of what I said earlier where our Oberoi leisure properties continue to, uh, to feature on the right most quadrant uh, in terms of uh, performance. There are some uh, figures here, which again shows that the recovery of ref power in the current year as compared to uh, last year has been good. And they continue to be good. What we actually see in the year 2021 is a sharper recovery, but again, we'll have to wait and watch as to how things pan out in the months to come, especially with the talk of the third wave. So I, I leave it to, to you all to really go through the presentation. And in case of any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Uh, food and beverage revenue has also gained traction. Uh, we are actually, uh, our focus on food and beverage revenue continues. Uh, as you would have noted that we've opened uh, two restaurants which are doing very well in, in Bangalore uh, and uh, a bar in Bombay some time back, which is again uh, a state of the art bar. And therefore our focus on food and beverage continues. Uh, we mentioned about the ONMO alliance, uh, the alliance with Mandarin Oriental. 
essentially this uh, will really come into play when uh, international travel starts where uh, guests who are loyal to both the groups will have access to hotels of each other uh, when really traveling starts off efforts are on uh, for enhancing brand awareness Finally, uh, coming to the, the financial results uh, of the first quarter, the revenue from operations has increased uh, versus first quarter of last year from 28 crore to 79 crore, and the total revenue up from 38 crore to 90 crore. Uh, total expenditure has increased uh, by 15% from 153 crore to 176 crore. Uh, our fixed expenses, and I'm sure this question is, is there in many of your minds, uh, because uh, we keep getting this questions from in, question from investors. So I'll probably try and preempt that answer. Our, our decrease in fixed costs is about 25% uh, odd, uh, and out of which we believe at least 15% of the cost is sustainable in nature and in the future will not come back again. We, of course, ended the first uh, quarter with a PAT loss of 93 crores versus 118 crores, uh, but uh, we definitely look forward to more optimistic times in, in the next couple of quarters. This is the consolidated results, and these are available uh, in the newspaper as well today. The business footprint for those who are joining in us for the first time, uh, just to show the architecture of how the, the company operates with its subsidiaries and with its associates, and our presence in India and abroad. Thank you so much. Um, I will stop here, and we look forward to whatever questions you would have. Uh, and we are happy to address them. Thank you, Mr. Kundu. We now open the floor for a Q&A session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please raise your hand and we'll unmute you to take your question. We request the participants to kindly introduce themselves and the name of the organization they represent before asking your question. We'll just wait for a minute while the questions line up. Can just raise your hands and we'll take the questions. Sorry, Naveen, if I may ask you, you probably want me to transfer the host. Uh, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, so I can just uh, moderate the Q&A. Can you tell me the option, please? Yeah, you just go now. You need to go to the panelist bat, uh, tab. Click on the icon below where it says participants. Right at the bottom. Friends, we'll just hang on for a minute. Uh, we'll start the Q&A very shortly. Mr. Kundu, right at the bottom, bottom strip, the icons are- Thank you, I've given it Excellent. Excellent. Okay, the first question is from the line of Sanjeev Pandya of Old Bridge Capital. Sanjeev, please go ahead. Sanjeev, please unmute yourself. Can I be heard? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, sir, I noticed that uh, your uh, room rents are, are uh, rising faster than your occupancy. So would it be fair to say uh, that at this stage, you're trying to hold the price line and expecting an uptick in occupancy despite the fact that... So it's not really uh, a commodity price. It's really that you're betting on... on uh, uh, you know, some of um, a surge in in, in um, consumption, uh, and therefore the price line is being held. This is not the natural ARR that one would expect. Um, so, uh, thank you. Hello, Sanjeev. Th thank you for your question. Uh, actually, we really look at balancing room occupancy with average room rate as well. Ah, 
So we look at both occupancy and room rates. And uh, I can't talk about how we're doing uh, this month, but uh, all I can say is that um, our, our strategy to maximize room revenue, uh, RevPA is, uh, is, is, is showing results and will continue to show results. Right. Uh, th th that's also, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much, Sanjeev. Thank you, Sanjeev. The next question is from Priyanka Khandelwal from iPro AMC. Priyanka, please go ahead. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, sir, can you help me um, understand or provide any parallels from the recovery in global business travel? Um, and, you know, based on your conversations with corporates in India, are there any parallels that you can draw for the recovery in upper upscale and luxury business travel over the next two years or so? Um. So, I, I, Priyanka, first of all, hello, um, and, and thank you for your question. Uh, if I've understood your question, your, your question is based on what's happening elsewhere in the world, uh, where vaccinations have, uh, uh, have, have progressed better than what, what's been done in India, what is the trend of both corporate and leisure travel returning? Uh, I know, for example, in the UK and the US, where vaccination rates are, are high, that leisure, of course, bounced back uh, quicker. Uh, but I also understand that uh, business travel is returning. And many companies have now directed employees to return to offices, uh, which you would have read about. Uh, because what we can achieve by working face to face in terms of culture building, values, etc., can't be done online. So uh, we're, we're optimistic that with vaccines, uh, uh, rates going up, and, and keeping in mind that many of our guests are amongst the first to be vaccinated, whether they're corporates or leisure travelers uh, in, in large cities where most of our travel comes from. I think our bounce back will be quicker uh, than perhaps uh, the rest of the country because of high vaccination rates amongst our, our guests. And of course, uh, I, I need to add that our colleagues have all been vaccinated. Understood. Um, and uh, my second question was, uh, where is the company employee to room ratio now? And how much uh, do you think is the sustainable level? And also if you could highlight what is the global standard of employee to room ratio um, for luxury hotels? And do you target to achieve that in the future? Um, uh, th thank you. So Priyanka, we've reduced uh... Uh, uh, manning by just under 2,000 people. That's about a, a 30 odd percent reduction. Uh, not all of this will be permanent in nature. Some of it will, will, will come back uh, as business levels pick up. Uh, as far as benchmarking with uh, others, I'm, I'm not aware of this data being published. So I don't want to hazard a guess uh, unless it is authenticated data on where uh, others lie. Uh, what I can say to you is that we uh, continue to focus on multi-skilling. We continue to deploy technology. Uh, we continue to run, uh, endeavor to run our hotels as efficiently as possible. And this is a, a target that keeps moving. Uh, so we will endeavor to, to continue doing that both during the pandemic and after the pandemic. Uh, but is there a number that you can quantify? Uh, yeah, we can. I, I don't have the number with me, but Cologne may have the number number of people oh, today. Uh, no, number of people are, I think it's about 4,000 uh, um, people. I, I, let me just, Priyanka, I'll come back. Let me just have a look. I should have that number. Just one. No, more. no worries. I can, I can take that off. Man. Not, a, not a problem. Uh, just hold on one second. I'll be able to probably give it to you right now. Actually, I'll let Kalo look it up and we'll, we'll give that uh, to you. Yeah, so it will be about four and a half thousand like... Uh, and it was 2,000, slightly less than 2,000 prior to the pandemic. So it was, if it's 4,000, uh, I think it's about 4,500 now. It was 6,500 prior to that or 6,400 prior to the, to the pandemic. Okay, that's very clear. Uh, and the last question I had was um, on your uh, room rate. So say if international uh, travel recovery 
um, I, I mean inbound travel does take certain amount of time to recover, like say one or two years. Is there a quantifiable impact on your ARR because of that, particularly for the palace hotels? Well, um, uh, again, what we've seen is that uh, our hotels, and that was reflected in the figures that uh, Cologne shared for our leisure hotels, Obro in particular, we are already high, running higher rates than the rates in 2019. Um, so, so our belief is that uh, guests in India have the propensity to pay those rates. And that's clearly demonstrated by both the average room rates and the occupancies at Oberoi Leisure Hotels. And this trend is only stronger um, in, in, uh, in the month of uh, July. Okay, that's very useful. Thank you. Thanks, Priyanka. Thank you, Priyanka. Okay, the next question is from Amit Agarwal. Amit, please unmute yourself. And a reminder, participants are requested to introduce themselves and the company they represent. Amit, please go ahead. Sure. Uh, thanks. This is Amit Agarwal from Nirbal Bank Securities. Uh, I, my question primarily relates to your top line of, you know, let's say about 96 crores. Uh, earlier, given a breakup of uh, the rental revenues to the FNB revenues, if you can help me with the breakup uh, in this uh, particular quarter, and has a decline on a quarter on quarter, quarter basis been driven primarily with the fall in um, FNB revenues? That is first question. Second question, following up with the, what the previous uh, question, uh, you know, the previous question asked. Uh, as I understand, today the growth is coming, if I may put it this way, from revenge tourism, because people are probably tired of sitting at, uh, at their home. Uh, you, MSME is not working right now. Your uh, the corporate is probably just about thinking about it. International travel is not happening. So uh, if there's a third wave or something, is it sustainable just on this particular thing? I know it's, uh, I'm stretching a point, but uh, just your views on that. Please, please. Thank you. Um, so I will uh, um, let Kalol give you the figures on rooms versus food and beverage. Uh, but uh, there has been uh, a larger contribution to food and beverage than rooms in, in, uh, than it was previously uh, compared to the previous quarter of, of uh, uh, or even 2019. Uh, so that, that skew has taken place. And Kalol, do you, do you have the yes, exact Yes, in 2019, percentage? it was, the ratio was roughly about 60-40, uh, which was about 50-50 in the last year. And uh, now we're returning. It seems that the trend is returning back to similar levels like 2019. But we'll have to wait and see as occupancy uh, gains more traction. Uh, probably, you know, a clearer picture will emerge. So what I was trying to figure out is, what is the reason for a drop in a quarter and quarter basis for a top line? So that was, uh, isn't the FNB fall? Isn't the FNB fall as the room rental fall? Sorry, Amit, just to clarify, there isn't a drop in revenue in the top line. Uh, quarter and quarter, quarter and quarter. Last quarter, it was 216 crores. This quarter, it's 96 crores. So I'm looking at it on a quarter and quarter basis. So certainly, Amit. Um, and, and Amit, I'm, I'm happy to answer that, that question. Or Kalol and I can both give you answers will be the same. Um, the, we had the second wave. Uh, I think it started on 18th of April or when, when lockdown started to happen state-wise. Um, and uh, we, in, in April, therefore, the latter part of April, occupancy levels were low. Even food and beverage uh, was, was low. We didn't have that in Q4 of last year. And then if I look at uh, May, May was uh, regrettably a, a total washout with occupancies plum plummeting uh, with the number of COVID cases going up. And we saw things, the economy start to uh, relax or restrictions start to ease in June. And we've seen, therefore, business pick up. So if I were to just say what the biggest difference is, it, it was that we had a second wave uh, uh, in, in, in Q1 uh, in the months that I've explained. And that didn't exist in Q4 uh, of, the, uh, of last financial year. So, so that would be that. Your second question was on... Uh, um, uh, the third wave, and also on MSMEs. Uh, actually, we're starting to see some green shoots on MSMEs, and we're uh, going to launch uh, 
some initiatives, particularly for MSMEs. Um, so that, that's one. Uh, if there's a third wave, uh, and it's a serious third wave, which I don't think will happen, at least my assessment is, and I, and I hope I'm right, because of vaccinations going up, we may see the number of COVID cases uh, increasing, but what we will see based on what we're seeing in other parts of the world, hospitalizations being low and fatalities being low, which is, which is the most important part. Um, uh, if, if a third wave weren't to happen, then we will see business uh, bounce back. God forbid if a third wave happens, whether it's business or leisure, travel will significantly decline. Sure. Uh, if I may just squeeze in one last question. Uh, what say in the next coming year and probably for next one or two years, what would be your capex and any new hotels or you know which are uh, looking to open the next? Let's put it this way: two years. I don't want to restrict it to one year only. Uh, well, uh, Amit, uh, you know we are still in uh, you know completely not come out of the pandemic. Uh, as you know, our capex plans we've said in the past that we are, our CapEx plans are all there, albeit they are staggered. Depends on you know, how things pan out going forward. So really speaking, I think it will be too early to talk about CapEx figures uh, going forward. Maybe in the next couple of quarters, uh, things will become clearer. Sure, thanks a lot. Projects, our three projects, in fact, our executive chairman uh, today in the AGM uh, did speak about the three projects which are on and which he expects by uh, FY25 we will have all these three projects in operation, which is Rajkar, uh, the project in Bangalore, and uh, the project in uh, Goa, all our own. Thank you, that's all from my side. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Amit. We have the next question from Venkat Samla. Venkat, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. So, uh, just wanted to understand uh, last time or, or or for the last two quarters actually, uh, you'd mentioned that you are thinking of coming up uh, uh, with some new revenue initiatives, which would uh, uh, which could also include some of the segments or sub segments that you may not really have a presence in at this point in time. Just want to understand what what has been the progress on that front and how soon can we hear more? Of it? Um. So one of the things uh, that we've already done, and all that information is available on our websites, both at Oberoi and Trident.com, um, is the, the, the uh, experience and, uh, experiences and packages that we've, we've launched. We're also looking at other initiatives to drive uh, revenue, and I would be, it would be premature for me to mention those on, on this call. I hope you understand. But things that have been launched are all available on our website. So, Venkat, uh, just to add to what Mr. Vikram O'Brien said, um, the last two quarters, of course, the, the second wave came in between that. So, uh, maybe it has got the plans have got a little stretched. So, please wait for the next few quarters and you'll hear the announcements whenever they happen. Sure, sure. So, so, I mean, I'm just trying to understand. I mean, what would be the latest that we can hear uh, on on this? I mean, oh no, I mean, uh, given the broader caveat that you know, no, no third wave. I, I couldn't hear the question. I'm afraid. Your, your, your line, line is not very clear. Your line broke, so we couldn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Venkat, there's some connectivity issue. Uh, your voice is breaking. Oh, the question is not audible. So connect back. Okay, sure. Come back and we'll take your question. Uh, the next question is from the line of from Sumanth Kumar. Sumanth, please introduce yourself and go ahead. Yeah, hi, Kalon. Hi, Vikram. Sumanth here from Motilal Aswal. Hi, hello, Sumanth. How are hi. you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Well, thanks. Yeah. So the, the, my question is, uh, can you talk about the recovery uh, in the business uh, in the month of July? And how is the business mix in the key cities I'm talking about, not, uh, not a leader business? Okay. Um, 
Do you know, I, I, I'm going to let Kalola answer this question. I'm, I'm a bit concerned on what I can and cannot say. Um, so Kalola will be, a, will be a better judge of what can and cannot be said. Um, obviously, we'd like to share as much information with you as possible, but we need to be mindful uh, of you know, disclosures. So Kalola, go, go ahead. Sure. Thank you, Vikram. So yeah, Samantha, you are, you are well aware of the disclosure requirements, et cetera. July is the first month of the second quarter. So we'll not get there, but to answer, to give a sense of uh, the trends, uh, yes, trends is, are healthy. They continue in the same direction in which uh, you saw the graphs that we showed earlier uh, from June onwards. In fact, uh, some of the cities, the gradients have been steeper. And as I shared uh, the analog, uh, you know, details also, uh, which really says that uh, there is some uh, good traction picking up in the cities of Delhi and Bombay. Uh, so we have a similar, uh, you know, view, and uh, July also is the same. And we would add to that. In addition to that, the leisure locations are really, really uh, picking up well as we go forward. Uh, talking about overall, uh, hotel industry has a higher fixed cost uh, pre-pandemic, say 65% uh, fixed cost and 35% variable cost. So, what's your view where post-pandemic? Where the where, uh, how is the mix going to be post-pandemic? Sumantha, uh, if, you, if you recall, I already uh, preempted that question um, to say that we expect a 15% reduction uh, in fixed cost, which is sustainable. And uh, obviously, there are some savings in the variable cost uh, as well um, in terms of better negotiations, et cetera, because of processes. And those have got nothing to do with uh, the pandemic per se. But uh, in any case, we were looking at uh, process efficiencies. Uh, so I'm sure you can derive from that, uh, you know, the percentages between fixed and variable cost uh, as, as we go forward. Can you update, uh, update us on air catering business? Sure. So air catering business, uh, we've actually uh, got quite a few uh, airlines uh, domestically. And I, I suppose you're referring to the Indian air catering business, right? You're not talking of Mauritius. Correct. Yeah, so the Indian air catering business, of course, uh, with flights uh, not operating, I mean, international flights not operating and operating only on bubble groups, uh, that's really uh, not going uh, good so far, uh, except that in the months of May, April and May, uh, there was, uh, and you would have seen in the media that uh, there was a lot of uh, student visas, et cetera, that were granted. So some business uh, uh, traction we saw there. Uh, but at the moment, as we speak, uh, it's it's mostly domestic, and uh, we do have uh, some increased business from some of the domestic players. So, any sense on um, how uh, things are panning out, how the performance uh, in number? Go, go. Any anything on numbers that we can? We can, we can share. So, uh, Sumant, I mean, as, as you're aware that, you know, these are only trends that we can discuss. Uh, and only the first quarter has gone by. We have three quarters to come. And uh, hopefully, if things go the way they are, um, then obviously, uh, we are cautiously optimistic. Uh, may, may I just add a, a couple of things, Sumant? Sumant, first of all, uh, we know that... Uh, domestic travel has started to bounce back. Um, and that was also in the HVS report. Uh, barring a third way, we expect that trend to continue. Uh, I think it's gonna take some time before international travel really comes back. Maybe uh, whether it'll be uh, in, in the last, uh, third, fourth quarter of this financial year is your guess as, as good as mine. Um, but we are uh, trying to secure revenue um, uh, with uh, the airlines that are operating today and we'll continue to do that. So uh, I don't know if that helps answer your question. So much. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Suman. Nice to speak to you again. Okay, we have Venkat back online. Venkat, would you like to go ahead with your question? Uh, I guess still there. Okay, we have a question from Sunil Jain. 
Sunil, please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir. And it was a very informative session. Uh, maybe this may be a repeat question, but I think I have not got the answer. See, we are seeing that this is a revenge spending that is happening on the leisure segment. And on the business segment, I do not see at least 80-90% of the corporates are still having the austerity measures in terms of travel. So how are we going to see or how do you foresee the revenues coming up with a sum total of business travel as well as leisure travel or the corporate travel as well as the leisure travel? Because this is a blip what I can see in terms of revenge spending. What after two months? So then may I ask you a question? What is What data do you have to sh indicate that this is data? that this is to in indicate that this is revenge tourism um, uh, or a large part of it is revenge tourism. Um, is there any data that you've read that substantiates that? Uh, not data exactly, but factually I'll say the spike that has come in the last two months, that was never there in the last previous three years in these particular months. So that corroborates that this is something that people want to go out. And, and that maybe I can explain to know. Um, I think the biggest difference uh, as a that caused that spike is not revenge tourism. In my view, it is because our Indian guests who uh, were traveling overseas, we have something like 25 million Indians or 25 trips that Indians make overseas is not happening. Even if you compare that with domestic uh, foreign tourist arrivals, it's small. And because people can't travel overseas, they're traveling in India. Um, now, with the Delta variant, um, we, we, we're not sure, and there was some data that was published yesterday on uh, infection rates, uh, et cetera, across the world. Um, I think it may be some time, and again, your guess is as good as mine, when uh, international travel, from India at least, will resume. So, uh, barring that happening, I think there will continue to be strong demand. And in fact, I would say as the winter months approach, that demand will become even stronger. Thank you, sir. That answers the question fairly. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank you, Sunil. We have a question from Vikas Ahuja. Vikas, please go ahead. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes Vikas. Okay, hi, uh, thanks for having me. So uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, number one, uh, can we, you know, talk about our expansion strategy, maybe not in one or two years, uh, maybe in medium term, how much we are planning to add, uh, maybe not build, but on management contracts, because clearly, uh, if you look at our peers, uh, they have been very aggressive in adding rooms and think, you know, uh, that COVID has kind of given them an opportunity to add on market share. So if you can, do, you know, comment on this first, please. Thank you. Sure, and, and I'll ask for help from Kalol in answering this, but I can certainly start. I think Kalol, one of the things that uh, Kalol mentioned in his presentation that are, uh, for us, it's very important to be the best um, and to run the, the best hotels, have the highest levels of guest satisfaction, uh, et cetera. So our focus will continue to be in, in that premium segment of, of travelers who stay at Oberoi hotels and also at Trident hotels. Um, we we absolutely are committed to to growing. In fact, uh, I'll just talk a little about the projects that my executive chairman mentioned uh, in his chairman's speech today at the AGM. Uh, we're developing an eight-acre site on Hebel Lake in Bangalore. Uh, that's a million square feet, and that includes both commercial and a luxury hotel. Um, so that's a, a large project that we will be undertaking. We have a, uh, a fantastic site in Goa. It's a 55-acre site, and we'll be developing a Oberoi luxury uh, resort on that, on that site. Um, and the third one, which is uh, the most beautiful palace in Rajgarh, uh, very close to Kajurao. Uh, Kajurao is an important tourist destination, uh, and we're developing a, a, a hotel there as well. Uh, in addition to that, we uh, will, with the right partners in the right location and for the right hotel, uh, look at management contracts. In fact, we open another hotel, a small luxury resort uh, in, in Madhya Pradesh. It's in the Kana Reserve. It'll open next year. Uh, sorry, in Bandavgarh. It'll open next, next year. So, uh, and that is a, a, a purely a management contract. Um, and internationally, we have a number of hotels that are under development, uh, for example, Doha, uh, 
uh, which is currently being constructed, which is also the management contract. Uh, sure, thank you. And and, and just uh, you know one clarification: when uh, any management contracts come uh, in the market, do we mostly participate in all of them, in which maybe Indian hotels and others are are, are participating? And secondly, my other question is uh, also you know uh, once most people are vaccinated, and I assume maybe in 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 maybe nine months or so, uh, don't we think so? The demand is going to be one of the best, and we will see one of the best. Era for maybe hotels in 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 maybe a decade. Clearly, uh, you know, US is entering into one of the best times. Actually, entering more of a Goldilocks era, and and now uh, many economists are talking about Europe following in six months and Asia following in nine to twelve months. So maybe when we talk about FY twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, the demand is going to be very very strong. And how we are planning to capitalize, especially you know, if we have come up with any kind of a digital strategy here, you know. Uh, the uh, the in terms of you know uh, ma making it more around digital and less human factors. Uh, uh, I, I I think if you can just just answer this. That. Sure. So um, in terms of uh, you know the future being uh, better than we've seen before, uh, I I hope that's the case. Um, and uh, I agree. Judging by what seems to be happening uh, in in places where vaccination rates are high. I think we have good reason to be cautiously optimistic. Um, so you may well be right, and I, uh, for, our, for our industry's sake, I absolutely wish and pray you're right. Um, we, we share your, your, your view on that. Um, as far as our hotels are concerned, we uh, cater to the, the, uh, to the pre premium, uh, to luxury segment, um, to guests who uh, are willing to pay a higher rate for quality, and that's clearly been demonstrated both in the past and present, uh, given the uh, rate premiums we and the RevPAR premiums we command over our competitors. Uh, we will continue to focus on that. And I just want to say one other thing with the pandemic, people want to be sure. People uh, will pay a premium uh, to be certain that that the hotel or the company they're selecting has the highest standards of safety uh, and COVID protocols. And I think with, with that in place, we, we're in a good position. Uh, our guests really appreciate everything we're doing as far as COVID is concerned. We get great guest feedback. And as travel continues, um, even when international travel returns, guests will be willing to pay a premium uh, for uh, staying in, in hotels for that very reason. And I think that puts Oberoi and Trident Hotels in a very good place, not only today, but also in future. Uh, that, that's uh, very helpful. Just one last uh, question. Uh, in terms of our corporate booking, uh, is it possible to get maybe some kind of cost that how much of it comes from maybe a technology or consulting size because, side because clearly their growth has picked up massively and the hiring has been very, very strong. So if, if if we have that data, otherwise, thanks, thanks a lot. We, we we absolutely have that data. I just don't have that data on me, uh, but we absolutely have that data. Uh, and and I'd like to also say one some things that we've been doing right from the beginning of the pandemic. Obviously, all of us want to be able to predict what's going to happen in future. Uh, and one way, so we've been talking to our corporate clients formally through a questionnaire, uh, and we ask them questions on on their travel patterns, on business. Uh, and we break that down by uh, the size of the company, uh, um, uh, whether it's a multinational or not, and also um, the business that they're in. Uh, and we've been doing this per periodically. Um, so uh, the, the insight that we get, I hope, we'll be able to not only see what how they've responded to in the past, but what their responses could be in future and how that will help us uh, drive business to our hotels. Uh, sure, so thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Vikas. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Vikas. Uh, I think we can take the liberty of squeezing in just a couple of more questions before we wind up. I see a few hands up which have already take, had an opportunity. Venkat, would you like to go ahead now? Okay, I guess he's still facing some problems. Sanjeev Pandya, do you have another question? 
Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Uh, and Sumant Kumar, the last one. Any question from your end? Sir, thank you. Okay. So since there are no more questions, I would now like to hand over the conference to Mr. Overay for his closing remarks. Over to you, sir. Um, uh, just, will you just give me one moment? Sure. Mm -hmm. There is a question. Meeting. Um, no, um, I just want to thank everybody uh, for for joining on the call. I, I saw we peaked at over ninety participants, so so thank you, um, thank you for your support, uh, thank you for believing in in our company and in the service we provide to our guests, um, and we look forward to uh, business conditions improving uh, in the in in the next quarters and in in the next few years. Um, um, as Sunil also uh, pointed out. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Naveen, my sincere thanks to you as well uh, for your help with this and for organizing this. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Oberoi, who's sitting with us in the office, uh, our executive chairman, and of course, from Kalol and myself. Thank, thank you, Mr. Oberoi. Naveen, thank you so much, Rajiv and uh, Mr. Patricia. Uh, and everybody else on the call. Uh, it's always great to interact with all of you and look forward to interacting with all of you again in the next quarter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. On thank behalf you. of SKP Securities, I'd like to thank Mr. Obara and Mr. Kundu for the time. We look forward to hosting you again. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.